What is up dudes, welcome back to my channel and today we are back with more YTC here on PCM 2020 and we're coming off a very fun race over in France with Paris-Nice as Benji took on the race. Make sure you've gone and watched that over on his channel if you haven't already before carrying on with this one and we have a really fun one today because we have the sister race over in Italy with Terreno Adriatico. And looking quickly at our rider's victories, you can see Higita has been a massive rider so far. Five victories, his first in the World Source standing. So I've pretty much spoiled what happens in the last episode. But the other guys, Blackwall and Benji, have been providing some very good results for the team. I haven't quite done so yet, so we're feeling the pressure. Let's try and get some Ws and get some good results in this one. I also wanted to take a look at the team standings. We're second behind Movistar in Super Prestige, but we head up the World Tour standings by a substantial margin. Let's not mess around any longer. Let's take a look at the parkours over in Italy. Of course, two time trials at the beginning and the end, as usual, at Terreno. So over 30k of time trialing in total. We have some hills, a flatter one for the sprinters on stage three, more hills again, stage four, probably the queen stage on stage five with the Monte San Vicino. Very fun looking climb, kind of medium length, 10k in total. Then stage six, probably for a sprinter, although an uphill finish. And then we have the final TT. So let's take a look at the planner. You can see the guys that went to Paris-Nice, of course. It's a very different team going to Terreno Adriasco led by Raffle Maika, who, if I'm not mistaken, will be leading our Giro in a couple episodes. I am playing the Giro this year on my channel, so hopefully we can prepare Maika for a good race. Here at Terreno first, we have Caden Groves as well, leading the sprint train, Ben Swift, Andrea Baggioli. We also have Bogalo, Tobias Foss, and Captain Price as our domestique slash time trialist. So let's view the start list this way to Vitamin Lotto, led by Caleb Ewan and I think Thomas de Ghent as well. We have the coin and quick step as usual with a very strong team. Don't even need to see them. They are led by Remco. They have Bennett and Jakobsen in the sprints. We have Bora. We have King Peter Sagan here, among a few others. Ackerman as well. Vincenzo Nibali is leading Vini Zabu. You love to see it. The Nibali bros on Vini Zabu. We did some fun transfers um, at the beginning of this one. That is definitely... One of my favourites, we have the Viviani brothers as well at Corfidis. They have a good sprint train as well. Uh, many good sprinters at this race, it would seem. Of course, Vanderpool is leading Alps and Phoenix with Jasper Philipson as well. Then we have Gazprom with Kreuziger, Fabio Aru too. This is a really fun start list already. We then have Bahrain Victorious. We have the likes of Wouter Pools as their leader, Caruso as well maybe. Aaron Buru, Sobrero, Batistella, Izaguirre, nice team too for Astano, it must be said. Domenico Pozzavivo leading Bardiani, that is something I am very happy to see. Iran is here with Steve Bargi, Betty Olstoyven, what a team for EF Pro Cycling. We have Tade Pagaccia, 83 Mountain, Tade Pagaccia, and what a team for UAE. They have Grunewagen, Trenton, Gaviria and McNulty too. That is absolutely absurd right there. FDJ have the likes of Madawa. Thibaut is here as well. As my favourite rider, Bruno Armourai. Heading a little further back, we have Circus. Once he go bare with Lorenzo Rossa, a new signing for them. Arkea Samsuk as well. Getting underway, they have Nairo Man at this race. Among a few other guys, we then have Jan Bovisma. You have Wout van Aert. They also have Sepp Kuss. Kreuzvik, Demulan, and Primoz Roglic as our guys are getting underway on the start line. So our boys get underway here in Italy. Bogalo is here for the first time in a YouTube Pro Cycling jersey. What a jersey it is as well. You have to say, guys, looking beautiful. We have Baggioli as well on a pretty poor day. Uh, and Bogalo, I think, can bury himself at 25 seconds on the front for us. Anyhow, Trek Segafredo are here. They have Ciccone among their ranks as well as Balka Molima. So we did just cross the first time split in third place. So we're on a pretty good time right now. I think Micah can maybe just sit on the back at this stage. We don't want him losing any time today. That is for sure. We have just six Ks go and our guys looking like we're going to get underway 
uh, to a decent start. So we have 2k to go. Price Peterson on the front or Captain Price. We now have Graves. He can sit up. We don't want him anywhere near the front. Bagale, just go to the finish, my man. Can we maybe take that best time? No, we can't. 40 seconds down. So we lost a heck of a lot of time in the final. Anyhow, let's take a look at the final teams. We have Valverde, Nizzolo, Emric Mass here for Movistar. I must say, it's a very strong start list, isn't it? With Dan Martin here as well for Israel. Simon Pelo, Team Mobile Legend, of course, right there. Bob Youngles is here. We have a pretty good team for AG2R. Then we go to the Ineos Grenadiers. Rowan Dennis, Adam Yates, Emmanuel Bookman, Gagan Hartz, Bernal, Ghana, and Carapaz. This team is unreal. This team is absolutely unreal. Mitchelton Scott as well with a few riders right there. Marco Brenner is here. We have Roman Barze. Uh, we also have Kevin Vermarker too. Uh, Dainese for some ab. And that rounds out the start list. As we probably are about to see the Ineos Grenadiers take the best time at the finish. Can they beat Yombe Visma? I'm pretty sure they can with Ghana. Powering to the finish and they're two seconds down. Yombe Visma take the honours then. And it is Kuhn Bauman who will be in the lead of the race. 76 Mountain, Kuhn Bauman too. Um, yeah, these two teams, Ineos and Yombe Visma. How are we going to get close to those guys? I have no idea. However, YouTube Pro Cycling in the top five on the first stage. I think we take that for sure, despite losing at 39 seconds. And by the way, guys, completely forgot to mention it, but we are expected to get a top five at this race. Not too important an objective. And as Sir Benji got us off to a perfect start, uh, we can probably afford to lose out on this one. Anyhow, we're going to try and get it, of course. So stage two, and we have two favourites from the same team, Van Aert and Roglic. Going to be difficult for us today with a punchy finish. Underway we go then, and to be honest, I think we'll just keep our guys in the main group today. The breakaway have pretty much no chance with this long, flatter section. And I think it's going to be for a punchy sprinter, Van der Poel suits today perfectly. So right now we're coming into this climb. We now have three riders with Imanola VT joining those guys up the roads. And I'm not quite sure who our leader should be today, but Gallo, he's not quite punchy enough to be fair with regards to his sprints. Bagioli perhaps, I think maybe too difficult for Graves. Ben Swift could be the perfect combo. So the quick tempo on this climb has seen the breakaway courts already. So I may try a little counter attack if the tempo does slow down as we have three riders out the back and it's three riders from Bora Hansgrohe. Okay, bit of a shame for them clearly, but pretty much everyone is able to stay with this tempo. I mean, I say that Captain Price is pretty much cooked right now. Mikael Björk, where are you? Blackwall, what did you do? And looking at the drop riders, Remco Evenepoel is currently out the back for the Koenink quick step. What has happened to Remco right there? No other favourites have been dropped apart from, of course, Simon Pello. Uh, Green of Egan out the back, of course, as you would expect. But apart from that, no one else, as we now have a full on this downhill. Stuyven and quite a few guys, Nick Schultz, Batistella too. But Remco out the back, how has that happened? And they're not dropping back any riders. What are Quickstep doing? As we have a massive fall, Pino, Quintana, Damar all go down right here. And it's an absolutely treacherous descent. Quintana does continue. Damar goes down as well. Antonio Nibali. This is a pretty crazy section of the stage as Captain Price needs to do his best to stay with this tempo. But right now, Jumbo Visma on the front. Wout van Aert is pulling. We have 48 riders in the main group and our guys have not recovered at all in that descent. Valverde, Carapaz are behind. Emric Mass as well. So the entire Movistar team pretty much. Uh, so many riders. I can't see them all because just so many guys are behind right here. We need to make sure we're staying with this absolutely mad tempo. So the group has now expanded to over 100 riders yet again. But I do believe the likes of Remco, Pino are still behind in this group somewhere. Uh, maybe not if we take a look further back. Here is Pino with Damar and I think Nairo Man as well is in this group. There he is for Arkea Samsek. So still plenty of riders are behind. So 12k to go. Remco did make it back in but the Pino and Quintana group are so far behind they're not getting back in. That is for sure. So already we have quite a few 
Rivals in the GC are losing time as Stefan Kung, an absolute powerhouse on the front. So at this point, Groves and Captain Price can set up for the day. I've come to the front with Bacalo. He's going to try and go to 90, whilst Micah can temper at maybe 85, just to try and stay to the front. But that is not going to be enough. Let's go 87. Uh, Bagale, really I've put him to the front with these guys who I'm happy to relay with. We'll see if Ben Swift is able to stay here in a potential sprint. But to me, with still 7k or 6.5k to go, this looks like it has the potential to be a GC day. Look at how many splits are taking place. The Mulan has been dropped and we have 33 riders currently at the front. I want to relay here because Micah can hopefully try and capitalize with 5k to go. So 3k to go. This is all about the GC as Remco Venepool is on the attack. Right now for quick step after getting dropped earlier in the stage. We're on this steeper section right here. Let's go 99 with Micah. Let's try and follow Vanderpool and Balcom Mollema if that is possible. Everyone else in our team is completely done as Remco Vanderpool looks brilliant to win the stage right here. 1k to go for Remco. Vanderpool is chasing him down as well. Micah, sprint for the line. Vanderpool versus Matthew Vanderpool. Who's going to take it? And Vanderpool absolutely steals it on the line as Micah finishes right at the front and if we take a look behind just see how many strong riders Bernal Pagacha we finished ahead of. I'm not sure if these guys are going to lose time but we have the likes of Ciccone behind as well as McNulty, Emmerich Mass. The list goes on right here. It's fair to say this has been a pretty fun start to the race. The top 14 get the same time and this right here is the list of GC contenders remaining at this Terreno Adriasco. I won't read it out because there are just so many riders who have lost time. Carapaz, Quintana, of course, Pino as well, some way down. You can see all of the riders that have lost time today and a lot of it. And Pino was 149th in the end on this stage. What happened? to Thibaut Pino after falling. Moving on then and a chance for Caden Groves to strut his stuff today but we have an exceptional list of sprinters here. Okay so we've just had a fall and involved is Caleb Ewan so the whole Lotto team have dropped right here and I expect we're going to see a pretty high tempo on the front to try and keep the Aussie behind. Let's put our guys right to the front here and you can see we have a mad tempo Already the breakaway have no chance and they are caught. Okay, so we've literally just crested this little bump right there. And over the top, we have massive splits um, in the Peloton with 120 riders out the back. Vanderpool is here, obviously among others as well. I'm sure they will get back on with Ghana on the front, but uh, let's tempo with Captain Price. So this is not the Peloton, what you're currently looking at. We have still... A minute gap between these groups right here. Tobias Foss is trying to put our guys to the front with now 12 k to go to Vietman Lotto. Clearly working hard. So you have to assume that Caleb Ewan is in this group. Of course, there he is. And still, plenty of very good riders are here if this group don't manage to get back in. So we now have 8 k to go. And it is Caden Groves' time to shine. But Ben Swift and Groves on bad days. On the day, we really need uh, really need them too, so that's not ideal at all. We can use the remaining gels right there, and it's downhill pretty much to the line. So let's go to 99, try and come to the front. In fact, with Captain Price, Tobias Foss is done right here. Not sure if this is the best tactic with Bennett, Jakobsen, Demar, all in our wheel with now 3.5k to go. We have Demar moving up with his team. Now 3k to go. Baggioli can try and come. To the front, Swift and Groves are getting forced back just a little bit with 2k to go. It's not the best position right now. Into the final kilometre, Caden Groves trying to go for the line, looking for some space and we're nowhere right here. Absolutely nowhere, going way too late. Bennett takes it ahead of Caleb Ewan, or maybe not. Caleb Ewan takes it as Bennett celebrates and Caden Groves is only just inside the top 10. Well, I said it was a strong sprinters lineup and just look at the guys in this group ahead of us, all with a higher sprint really than Caden Groves. Actually, he's going to 79, hasn't he? But anyhow, I don't really see any gaps taking place today. 
uh, despite those two groups. And so Micah continues on in the top 10 in the GC whilst Adam Yates is in the lead. On to the next one and we can be really creative right here with these climbs and then a false flat climb to the finish and over 200k today let's get it so today's final breakaway is now complete two and a half minutes up the roads you can see those guys with goods on and a few others up the roads you know what guys i've had enough of this to this point i've won one race in this season so far and as black war says it's time to get some dubs and we're going to try and really try and push the tempo over this climb and the following climbs to make this as difficult as possible. So Andrea Baggioli has made this so, so difficult and all of our guys are just going off the front a little bit with Captain Price in the group behind of seven riders and we have caused absolute mayhem right there with that tempo. Riders are all over the roads already and our guys are all at the front of the race. This is perfect. Bagalo, sit up, mate. You are one of our leaders today. Uh, we'll tempo with, I think, Foss and Baggioli for now on this flasser section. And sure, these guys probably will get back in, but they're going to spend a lot of energy. So a lot of guys have just caught us, sadly, and it's up to 150 riders. But hopefully this is going to put us in a great position to be on the front foot for the remainder of the stage. Let's come to the front again with all of our guys and Baggioli can try and tempo for a little bit. So this time it's other teams really pressing on as we're getting forced back now in this group. And look at our guys' energy again. Could this be a surprise? GC Day Bagalo on this plus five day is also struggling. And Richie Carapaz, Wout Van Aert, Adam Yates, Primoz Roglic all to the front of this group. So Ben Swift is going to attempt to really put the pressure on the other teams right now. However, we're up to 98 riders again. So could we sit up here and make UAE do the work? Trentin is going to do it instead. We're going for Caden Groves. It's risky. He doesn't have too much energy left. Um, and here's our sprinter of choice today. So Ben Swift is now done for the day. And even Eugenie Bagalo on this plus five day is now struggling, but he is going to go up to 90 on the front. So let's try and in fact, drop it to 87. Caden Groves is going to really struggle with this tempo. That is for sure. And you can see Groves struggling so much, but I want to drop as many strong sprinters as possible, uh, but we definitely need Groves in the finish. So we're gonna have to slow up a little bit with Bogalo in support of Groves. So there you go, Groves makes it over in a group of 38 riders. How has he done it? What a ride. We have Nizolo, Damar still in this group as we have attacks now from the likes of Tade Pagacha. And I'm not gonna follow that, we can't follow that. Uh, let's just try and sit in the wheels, save some energy on this downhill and prep the sprint for Caden Groves. So that Pogaccia attack has caused absolute chaos and can Groves hold on here to the line? That is my question right here. Um, gonna be difficult for him. The likes of Demulan um, is chasing Pogaccia in. And there you go. We can slow up a little bit. Let's go 70. This group of 25 could get back in. Um, but if they do, they're not going to be too dangerous, I believe. Let's focus on the front and try and go for Caden Graves. So Micah can now jump to the other wheels. We have Vanderpool in this group. And you know what? We're going to follow him right here with Caden Graves. Bogalo can go to the front. Caden Graves is in a great position on the wheel of Matthew Vanderpool right now into the final 1.5k. Let's try and go a little early. Groves getting the jump on these guys, but he's going to collapse before the line. Oh, oh, it's horrible. Arnold Demar takes the win and Van Aert comes second. Groves, we went too early. We just went too early. Just to illustrate the tempo we saw today, Bardet, Vincenzo Nibali, the likes of Bennett, of course, all getting dropped. We dropped plenty of strong sprinters, Sagan included. But in the end, Groves just couldn't hold on to the tempo. Demar taking it in the end with Micah still looking pretty good in the GC. On to the main GC day then and the Monte San Vicino and our boy Raffle Micah. Again, some superb opposition at this race, but we need to perform. We're underway then. I'm trying to again go in the breakaway with a few guys. We have Swift 
and Captain Price going up the road as Thibaut Pino, seven minutes down in the GC, decides to follow. So we're currently sprinting for the KOM sprint, but this isn't our goal today at all in the breakaway as Captain Price is just going to drop away to the top of this climb. We want to just try and get Ben Swift in a decent position, really, um, to support Raphael Micah later in the stage, and it would be great if Captain Price can get back on and help out Ben Swift. So Captain Price did indeed get back on and he's really helped Ben Swift uh, pull on the flat section in the valley. In fact, Swift hasn't pulled a turn because Captain Price is in this group. So hopefully he's going to now be in some good energy, but Captain Price is just gonna drop away from this group pretty much instantly with some strong riders. Of course, Thibaut Pino uh, being here. So we are seeing such a quick tempo, I think, mainly because we have so many strong domestiques here at this year's Terreno. Just look at how many riders are getting drops early on on these climbs right here. Foss is struggling and we may have to drop uh, Ben Swift back, in fact, to help out Raffle Micah, but having him up the road has helped him uh, survive longer than he would have done. Onto the Monte Lago right here. Van Aert is still in the front and just 90 seconds to the original breakaway. And look at Foss. He just cannot stay here in this group as we also have Ben Swift here now protecting uh, Raffle Micah. And it's going to be intriguing to see how many of these guys make it over ahead of the final climb. And the answer right now is 45. So under 50 surviving from the main group as we still have those three out front. So under 12k to go to really decide who is going to be in pole position and likely will win the Terreno Adriatico this year. And Micah is looking pretty good at this stage, but here we go now coming into the steeper section of this climb. Swift isn't going to be around for long, so we're gonna have to rely on Andrea Baggioli and there is no chance we can try anything with the likes of Kuss just waiting to relay on the front. So 5k to go on this climb and Micah is now by himself, which is nothing when you consider the riders, for example, Ineos have in this group. And Micah probably has the energy to push this maybe a little bit. Let's try and come to the front, getting blocked a little bit. We still have 31 riders in this group and this is where we need to make the difference as Alejandro Valverde is on the attack. Is Pogaccia going to go? I'm not sure we have the punchiness to follow Tale Pogaccia. So let's instead try and ramp it up to 90 with Micah as we're now seeing the race explode somewhat. There go the Slovenians as Pogaccia and Roglic are trying something. Micah is going to try and react just a little bit with that little kick right there. Pogaccia and Roglic are pushing this so, so hard and everyone else is pretty done as we're in a group now with the Movistar duo, but we can't go like this to the finish, sadly with Raffle, Micah and Pogaccia and Roglic are from a different planet right now. We're gonna have to slow up. Can we drop Valverde as well as Emric Mas? Everyone else is just doing nothing right here, but into the final kilometre, Micah is trying to catch Roglic and Pogaccia, but he's not going to. Which one of them is going to take the stage win? They're both pretty much done um, as Micah is going to ride in for a very nice third place today in fairness, um, but I think Roglic is just going to beat Tade Pogaccia and he is going to be in the position to win this season's Terreno Adriatico. Micah though, in for a very strong third place on the day. So Roglic and Pogaccia cannot be split at the front, but Raffle Micah by far is the best of the rest. When you consider the riders at this race, I think we can be pretty happy right there with a top three. We're well ahead of everyone else and hopefully can challenge Pogaccia for that second place. Um, and looking at the other comps, we're pretty much nowhere in all of these. We're all in from Micah Podium. On to a flat one then. And to me, this is more for the likes of Van Aert or Van Der Poel, but we'll see if Caden Groves can challenge. So I think we may try and put Captain Price up the road today. Why not give him an opportunity up the road in the breakaway? And if not, we can go for Groves or Ben Swift. So I did manage to force Captain Price up the roads and Vincenzo Nibali has also attacked up front. Let's see if the Shark and the Captain Price can form a good bond. What a glorious sight it is. Captain Price and Vincenzo Nibali side by side up the roads in the breakaway. 91k to go 
is it too early to dream right now? Because we have over five minutes all the way back to the Yumbo Visma Le Peloton. It's happening, it's happening. 50k to go, we have eight and a half minutes and Captain Price, like I said, is the underdog. We're the worst sprinter out of the guys. We're the worst climber out of, the, uh, out of this group as well. Can this be our miracle that I really need, judging by my current form? So one and a half k to go. It would really help me if these guys don't go for this KOM, uh, KOM sprint. And as I say that, you can see Vincenzo Nibli and look at the difference on the climbs. Captain Price can hardly hold the wheel of the Shark and Nick Schultz. But let's just try and stay here over the top and not lose time on these guys. But this is a chance for redemption. It's been a horrible episode. Results rise really for me. Uh, we'll relay it probably 55. We're not going to pull too hard. We have the stage win already. We don't really need to relay too hard at all. But not only a chance for redemption. Uh, but Captain Price, can we prove Blackwall right for signing this man over Mikhail Björk? And right now we're getting our first look at the finish. So it's not really too steep, the actual finish line. We just need to make sure we can get there in this group. And these climbs could well uh, not be steep enough really to drop Captain Price. Here we go then, 20k to go. And the Shark initiates things, attacking away from this group. Maybe saying Captain Price isn't pulling his weight, but... Um, I'm expecting to see lots of moves right here. And again, right here, 16 K to go. This time it's Nick Schultz attacking off the front. And you know what? I'm just sitting in the wheels. 15 K to go. We're not the favourite. Let's try and hold on to the shark as Nick Schultz kicks again. And our only chance really is if these guys just spend too much energy uh, whilst we sit in the wheels. So here we go. Jonas Kock attacks and Nick Schultz is slow to react on this occasion. So we have... Jonas Koch, Vincenzo Nibali and Captain Price coming to the front. I think Schultz will get back in or maybe not. He seems to be struggling to hold that wheel and that is massive. If we can get rid of Nick Schultz, this is going to be perfect for Captain Price in this group uh, and the Shark looking menacing as always. However, nine case go, you know what? I'm playing games. I really am just playing games with these guys. I'm going to follow Nibali because we don't really have the kick to follow Jonas Koch if he attacks. Uh, with 7k to go. Nick Schultz may get back on, but I'm hoping he's going to be too tired um, after having to give a big effort to make it back on right here. 6k to go. This is so, so tense. Can Price take this win? We all want so, so badly. So then 4k to go. Energy gel on Captain Price. We have Nibbly uh, on the front and not really pacing. There you go. He attacks right now let's try and get in the wheels can we follow with captain price we're struggling to catch them and that could be it our chances are gone just like that with captain price we cannot follow the wheels however there you go they're slowing up just a little bit let's try and catch them get in the wheels again with captain price we need to regenerate some reds but Jonas Koch is the massive favorite as we come into this final kilometer Koch goes for the line captain price cannot follow him and Jonas Koch takes the win right here at Terreno Adriatico. I could have probably played it better. Um, Captain Price is going to just miss out on second to the Shark. And oh, we can't get a win, it seems. I'm gutted, guys. I'm really gutted. I knew we couldn't take it in a sprint. And uh, we just needed to follow that first attack and not use all our energy trying to get back on to Nibbly and Jonas Koch um, with about 3k to go. Then we had no reds left to try any counter attacks and I mean when you look at Captain Price he's not really made for a finish like that compared to these guys I did my best not to be on this occasion and so guys that's going to be it because we're not going to win this stage for sure with the likes of Ghana and Kung at this race of Venipool as well uh, when our best time trialist is probably Captain Price and Bergalo so uh, let's see if Micah can at least finish off with a podium. He may not have won the stage yesterday, but Captain Price won our hearts with that performance. What a decision. I'm so happy we've got this man in the team. Screw Mikhail Bjo, we don't need that man. Uh, can we maybe take the best time for now? No, we can't. Again, we just miss out. It's been a difficult race, but this could be our best chance at getting something uh, really meaningful out of it right here as Bagalo. On a good day, can we take the provisional best time from Sace Bowl? So 1.5k to go for Bugale. Now into that final kilometre. Let's try and ramp it up a little bit. Don't want to spend 
all our energy too soon. There you go, across the line, and again, we miss out. Maybe I spoke too soon as Tobias Foss, an even better time trialist probably, and on a better day as well. Where is he at that first time check? Somewhere down though, because Pippo Ganna is now on course. So Foss probably can only aim for a second place right here, uh, provisionally at least across the line, and we go into the top three. So not many men can claim to challenge Pippo Ganna in ATT. Warren Bargill isn't one of them, but Wout Van Aert, can he take the best time from Ganna on Ganna's home soil? No, he cannot. Let's see how Ganna's teammate Rowan Dennis does across the line right here, and Ganna holds on. So Raffelmeiker off the start ramp, and we're looking to secure our third place. I think Pogaccia is going to be too far away, 20 seconds ahead. Um, and he's probably a better time trialist, so we're not going to catch him. Roglic will hold on as well for GC victory, and Valverde is almost a minute down. So um, I think we can be pretty sure to finish in third place right here. Valverde, um, Yates, Mollema, these guys really aren't separated by too much as Remco Evenepoel goes into second place. That could see him rise the ranks probably into fourth place, I would imagine, um, in the finish. However, Raffle Micah is 20 seconds down at that first split and Pogaccio, yes, yeah, six seconds down. Let's settle for third place. So Valverde crosses the line ahead of us in the top 10. A nice result by him. Luckily, we have enough of a buffer not to worry too much with Raffle Micah, who should finish comfortably in the top three in the GC. Pogaccio isn't going to win the stage, but he will be second at this Terreno. Adriasco with a very good time trial right there as Primoz Roglic crosses the line. He won't take the stage win, but he wins the 2021 Terreno Adriasco. So in the end, it's a pretty average race. It has to be said, if we look at our individual stage results, we were just nowhere, absolutely nowhere. Michael was third on the Queen stage, probably our best result on paper. We have Price Peterson in the top three there as well, of course, in the breakaway. Uh, but two third place, our best finishes on any stage. We really bottled a few finishes for sure. Uh, Micah though, our best result, getting the sponsor objective of a top five on the podium alongside these two guys is no mean feat. And I must say, um, I'm not trying to make excuses, but the start list at this race is absolutely stacked. I mean, the riders who were here, just unreal. Roglic won the points jersey. We have Pino taking the Constellation of the Mountain competition, Pogaccia in white, and the Ineos Grenadiers take the team classification. And so guys, that is all from me in this one um, as we round out, like I said, an average race for sure. Um, it would have perhaps made sense for me to do Milan San Remo, but Blackwall is scheduled to do that in the next one. And to be honest, considering my current form, it's best to give it to that man. We'll let him try and win that race, I'm not sure who with maybe Biniam Gamay perhaps um, and then I think Benji has all of the cobble classics up to the Ronda and then we're back with the Exilia Basque Country and Paris-Roubaix in the next episodes on my channel so I hope you're looking forward to that and of course the episodes on the other guys channels. We do hold on to top spots in the World Tour standings but let me tell you that has absolutely nothing to do with my own performances. That is for certain. I really need to try and lose some weight because Blackwall and Benji are absolutely carrying me right now. Anyhow guys, really hope you enjoyed the episode. As always, smash that like button if you did for a Micropodium. What else do you want to see? Let's be real. Um, but drop a sub to my channel if you're new and make sure you're following Black War. Subscribe to his channel because the next one is over there. I will see you in the next one.